What's up guys, Larry Chen here. Welcome to another episode of Hoonigan Autofocus. Today we're at Zcon. This is the car show day. This is the last day. Uh, this vehicle, built by Robert here. Yeah. Hi Robert. How you doing? Hi. Um, this vehicle got the most attention, without a doubt, on my social media. Oh, wow. I posted a couple pictures of it. Right. I could not believe how many people commented, oh my God, the Safari car feature that thing, you know, right. show us more pictures of that thing. Right. Yeah. I mean, honestly, the reason why I took pictures of it in the first place was because I was stopped in my tracks when I saw it. It was so, it's just so cool. It has such a presence versus all the other Zs here. So story time with Larry. In uh, January 2020, I went to Japan. I went to the Nissan Zama collection and I had a chance to see their original Safari cars. Oh yeah. Yeah. And just kind of thinking future um, I guess, you know, car nerd Larry would build a Safari Z, right? If I, if I found a, a chassis or something where I could maybe build a tribute car, it would be a lot of fun for me. So I took very, very, very detailed reference photos for that reason. Who knows? Maybe that's 10 years down the line, but you already sir built a safari z and this thing is so cool appreciate it and i went a little bit more safari than the typical with the roof rack and the full rack because we actually use it we live in a lake community so we use it in the woods or use it wherever we want snow and actually the the rear rack actually helps for the weight bias you want a little bit more weight in the rear just get that squat and everything going so Okay, so that's, you built it so you could drive it on the back roads near your area. What did this start life as? It's a 73 brown and tan, half vinyl top automatic car. So it had all the boxes checked against it for, you know, restoration. So I, I didn't feel bad about doing it to this car, <laughs> just for that reason. Out of uh, one of the cars I saw was the Pete King rally car that ran a couple years ago. And, and that kind of inspired me a little bit with it because, you know, the car is very capable in two-wheel drive. I've not got it stuck. I take it rock climbing and everything else. It, they're awesome as far as, so I was actually pretty stunned by that. But I, when I built this one, I wanted everything to fit a little bit more than just a generic rack on the roof and a cut bumper with lights and, you know, all that. So we made everything where all bolts to the body, all factory bolt points, you can actually lift the car up with a forklift in the front and the back by the bumpers. Everything's all tied in real nicely. But also wanted it form fitting where it didn't interrupt the car. So like the roof rack follows the roof lines and, and the back hatch actually opens. So you can wow. still, the rack opens and the hatch opens. No way. Yeah. Oh, I didn't even notice that. Yeah. Okay, so how did this, uh, how was the chassis? Was it pretty rusty when you started? No, actually, uh, we stripped it down the bare metal. It's a beautiful car, other than it had floor repair done because it was an AC car and, of course, it had a little bit of rot there. And somebody did that previously, um, and we just left it because it was solid and good. But rockers, bottom, it's got all the factory spot welds and seams, and it was actually pretty sad that it was a brown and tan and, you know, vinyl top car because it would have been a pristine you know, car to use for a full, you know, restoration back to original, short of that. This is the thing that's most impressive for me. Uh, I, I've seen a lot of these just with the racks, but the fact that it goes all the way down here mm -hmm. and this is for rigidity or what? Yeah, it's tied into the body and in, in, in several layers. So even where it bolts into the side, it's, it's actually, there's pins that run all the way through to the different uh, metals walls of that roof rail. So it actually, this stiffened the car up quite a bit. May not look like it's got small bolts and everything on there, but they actually run through and it, it really helps. But did you do all of this custom we had, yeah, all, all this, of this? All this stuff was done in, in Medill, Oklahoma, where we're at, and everything was done custom. And like I said, it was, it was more important. There's obviously nothing off the rack for, yeah. the, for doing this type of thing. And it was, I really wanted to look like it was form fitting versus just utility. Incredible. I love it so much. I love that it follows the body line. This hinge and everything, it's so crazy that. Okay, let's. It fits. I just want to see. All right, so all, what you, it looks like. all you do is pull the pin. Okay. Lift it up. No way. You repin it right there. That locks. And then there. That is incredible. Full size spare. Yeah, full size spare. And then we have the, the inner spare over here that there's nothing here that we can actually put weights in the back there to change the bias of the car if we want. Huh. 
Okay, so what did you do here? This is all T3 stuff? Or? This is apex engineering here on your strut brace, and that's T3, uh, the rear, oh. rear harness bar. The front engine bay has got the uh, apex strut tower or strut bar in there and that ties into the firewall. You could drive this every day. You have audio. In I here. drive it every day pretty oh, well. Oh, you do? Yeah, it's a, it pulls regular duty. The rear bumper setup? Yes. Also, obviously, all custom. Love, love it so much. Love this. Yeah. The skid plate. People ask about the skid plate all the time, but that thing has saved me so many times backing up on logs or something like that. Keeps you from tearing up your tank. It'll actually lift the car up, you know, versus versus a hard hit. So what was the hardest thing to lift this vehicle? What was the hardest thing to get that ground clearance? Well, main thing is I worked with Apex and they made me some longer arms to my spec and what I wanted, the control arms. The main thing is to get the suspension geometry correct where it's not a squirrely driver. So mm. by when you change, when you lift something up and then all of a sudden your cambers and everything change and then you're kind of screwed uh, as far as stability. So we've got a, we did extended coilovers. And then at that point we had to have longer control arms. Otherwise your cambers are way off. Yeah. So we have adjustable longer control arms so we can get all that straight. On the front, we had to go longer control arms and then also change the pivot point of the control arm on the cross member. That way your gains are correct. So that's what I say, this thing drives. If you notice like a lot of your, your Zs, when you, when you lower them or you raise them, your rear cambers are way off. These are all stationary. On top of that, most people, when they lower their Zs, they don't actually section the shocks, so Correct. they don't have that much travel. Correct. So they only have whatever, two inches of travel. Correct. So this, it, you have, did you have to cut it and it weld like a, a yeah, extended? Yeah, we did the typical thing Got there. It. And actually, I'm gonna change it up a little bit more. I'm gonna go with about a two inch longer throw. Um, I can see when we're, when we're getting airborne or we're getting lift, that I would have, a, I'd like to have a little more extension. So does that mean you also have to get an extended axle for this? We had, well, I had heavy duty axles made because of course they're longer, they're out further. So they're, they're not a CV joint, they're a typical uh, old style U-joint heavy duty built axles with slides. This is incredible too, the, the fact that it, it the again, sliders, yeah. follows the body line. These actually are functional too. Yes, yeah, yeah. They, they've saved me a few times. Got mud flaps on it. Th this is actually very appropriate to have over fenders. Some people are a little over the over fender yeah, look, yeah. but this is actually completely these, functional. These are functional and we, we saw the factory wheel wells and everything. None of it's been cut. Really? Because of the lift, we didn't we have enough lift that they don't hit anyway. So you can go lock to lock. Yeah, go lock to lock, but like there we didn't cut the rear fender wells, everything's still factory intact. I love the lights so much. It, you know, it just has that rally look. The front bumper. So this is special too because the stock bumper attaches here. Correct. And you actually tied this all the way underneath. Yeah, yeah, we tied it all the way to the factory bolt points on the frame and the cross member. So it'll Jeez. actually lift up. That is so cool. And I'm sure the skid plate has saved you many times too. Oh yeah, definitely. There's, but, been, a, there's been a few times I've been resting on the skid plate. But you can really see how much wider it is. So it is a square setup then in terms of tires. Yeah, yeah, it's just a common common setup there. And we, we've kind of made everything fit to what was already available. And I, I've had some, you know, people say, oh, what, why, are you, why are you running rotor wheels and versus this wheel or that wheel? And there's been some debate on that. The reason why is because they're durable enough, but it's not gonna cost me $1,500 to change a wheel if I hit a rock, you know? So it's easier replacement and they're fairly lightweight and they work out pretty good. Yeah, well, you drive this thing hard. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so can we check out the engine bay? Sure, sure. All right, so still L series. What are we looking at here? We're looking at L28 built up cam. It's got a nice little cam and everything in it. Uh, it's it's pretty. It's built torquey, so it'll actually lift the front wheel off the ground in the dirt. It'll just bog down and go. Triple Weber's six into one header. Uh, just, just good bulletproof, you know, it run on, I run oct high, you know, octane boost and, you know, high octane gas, but it's, it's just a regular friendly rider. Yeah. This is reliable as can be. Yeah. Um, you, I, I see that you've upgraded certain things to mm -hmm. make it more reliable. Yes. Right. Yeah. Electronic ignition and triple Weber's and 
and uh, typical thing there. People ask about the fuel filter there all the time. I didn't want to get rid of the factory fuel fil filter location. That fuel filter actually is my rear fuel filter at the tank. So that just holds our extra versus putting it in the glove box. That's pretty cool. And then we have our water separator fuel filter right there. Oh, on the power that's wall. awesome. So just a little stand, because you don't yeah. ever know when you're going to get, you got to get under there and change it. Yeah. You know, we just... And then on top of that, you still have your inspection yep, light, yep. which is super cool. So I tried to keep it, I, I tried to do it as if it could have been built back in the day. Uh, I don't, nothing exotic, nothing, anything, just bulletproof, you know, solid. All right, let's talk about the interior. So what am I looking at here? So the interior is the original dash. Um, I'm running, uh, you know, we're just running rubber mats, bare floors, uh, lizard line floors underneath that color match. Uh, original uncracked dash, uh, skillered uh, door panels and center console, which I really love the center console. I love it, the it, look. It, I love, it just gives it that updated look. But yeah, also it, on top of that, it's super rugged. Yeah, it fits great and, and I really do like that. And then of course, you know, you've got the T3 bar and, and then the apex in the rear. This door panel is super nice too. Yeah, they, again, it's part of function, you know, and that's why we have rubber mats. We're, we're out in the mud or snow or, or you, you don't want to have to worry about it. We didn't even put drain. We didn't even put drain plugs in the holes in the floor, in case you just have to. You, you want it to drain out in case you get in trouble. Yeah. And, and then tell me about the seats. These are pretty nice for off-road. They're, they're actually pretty nice, and and I forget the brand of seats there right now, so you have to forgive me there. But with the S30s, it's a damn near impossible to find a seat that's not too wide, and these fit great. They're not a super expensive seat, but. Uh, I got them because actually the width works perfectly. You're not rubbing your doors. You're not you're, that typical thing. Um, we made the, and we made some brackets for them to mount ourselves, and, and that's about it. Well, you built an awesome car. Thank you so much for showing us this. This thing is so cool. Thank you I, so I do, much. I do like the timing wine too. It, I, I was a little apprehensive about it at first, but it actually fits the utility look of the car. Yeah. So you can hear this thing coming down the road with that wine. I bet you, you get some crazy looks when you're driving around uh, the, biggest, the trails next to your house. <laughs> the, well, the biggest looks are actually going down the highway, even here at Zcon, people with their cameras out, they're almost breaking their neck at the intersections because they're, you just don't see it, you know, and, and it should, and the Safari Rally is actually getting popular among a lot of different cars are doing it to Lamborghinis now and fairly modern cars. So I think it may be a, a decent trend for somebody who wants something different. And actually it's a cheaper build in most cases. Well, a lot of um, Z owners and a lot of Porsche 911 owners, you know, when they lower their car, when they see a speed bump, they have to slow down. Yeah, yeah. But no. now you see a lot of the Safari 911s and then of course this, when you see a speed bump, you just keep going. Oh yeah, it's fun, <laughs> it's fun. Yeah, you just don't have to slow down, it's a lot of fun. So uh, did you switch it to a five speed then? It is a five speed. That's one thing uh, that, that for, for the highway use that we use the car. So we drive from Medill to Oklahoma City or Dallas or whatever, interstates, you know, everybody's doing 85. So of course, it's always beneficial to have that little bit extra gear. Very cool. Well, thank you so much. We're gonna keep shooting at Zcon. There's just so many cool cars here. Um, yeah, hope you guys enjoyed the coverage. Woo! <laughs>